Hi guys, thanks for showing up to the nocturnal feeding. Tonight I'm with James, the normal guy that I'm with every week. He's my hey. buddy. Well, we've also got Brack. There we go. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> and well, and guys, I apologize for not being here last week. Uh dad had a stroke right like maybe in half hour before the stream started. Hmm. And uh so I had to hang out at the hospital all night long, and but he's back home. I appreciate everybody's prayers and thoughts, and uh, he's back home, and now we're just specialists to try to figure out what's going on. Absolutely. But, well, I think I can speak for everybody in saying, Ed, we completely understood and don't feel yeah. bad because you, you've got to take care of that family first. Family first. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I haven't painted it. But uh, I have baked it, and I've got the little crystals in there that I'm hoping will shine once the lights are on it. This is going to be going into the cave tank we're making. So cool. And it's Thank you. It's You know how there's stalactites and stalagmites. Stalagmites might reach the top. Stalactites hold tight to the top. And uh, this, this is one that's actually a pillar where it's actually connected. So tonight we're going to do the top part which is going to have some stalactites kind of drop down and it's going to kind of fit like that on top. And I've made it so that this filter will fit right inside. So that's the goal for tonight. Oh, and guys, I appreciate all the comments on uh, coming up with a new name for the show. And what do you all think about... Aquatic Arts and Crafts with James and Ed. It's kind of I, think a little... it should, I think it should be with Ed and James. But... I don't know. But, but what... Aquatic Crafts is a hit, however you it work is. it out. It is, absolutely. So you've got a couple of super chats that are already trying to disappear off of my screen, uh, oh my but gosh. I wanted to let you know about them. IHSPS's Tank Tribe threw that $2 super sticker out there with that cute little fox with all the hearts behind it. Yeah, I'm still calling it a fox. Live with it. Uh, that's going to be my beta beta is calling that a fox. So it is what it is. Uh, but thank you so much. I I hate stupid people's tank tribe. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, what's so going much. on, Tim Kendrick? And there was another one down here from Maria Z. Again, great to see you, Maria. I hope you're doing well. Uh, she threw a five dollars super sticker out there with the Karate Fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so very very much appreciated. Uh, appreciate you all being here. Pond Life Bird Garden um, Rack. Cross the man, the myth, the legend. Appreciate know, you hanging man. out with us tonight as well. It's my pleasure to be here again, guys. Thanks for having me. Most right, definitely. You look you like Jake Paul there for a minute, James. Did I? Okay. Yeah, the boxing. I thought that was Jake Paul. It, it might have been. I we was trying to get millions of views it. tonight. You keep yeah, that up. Definitely, wow. definitely. I'm trying not to mess the shoulder up any worse than it is. I actually fell on it last week um and it's not been feeling so great but uh, well, that's just my exercise routine right uh last thing here and then i'll turn it back over to ed uh fantastic freaks through a five dollar super chat out there it says dropping oh. five hope all is good guys always enjoying hearing what's going on with everyone stay fantastic everyone absolutely thank you fantastic, fantastic. Well, and c congratulations to him for getting married on saturday yes big congratulations, congratulations. In Absolutely. the Omaha Zoo, which is yeah. really cool. I mean, if you find a woman that's happy or is okay with you having yeah. a whole bunch of fish tanks, you better snag that one up because there's you know not a lot of them to go around. Not just happy that she likes fish or that he has fish, but she got yeah. married in the aquarium part of the zoo. Oh, man, that's great. Yeah. That is so cool. So, so cool. It's one of my favorite zoos in America. But, hey, Shay. So, I'm using Sculpty. And this is oven baked clay. It's dangerous to put in your aquarium if you don't bake it properly. So you got to bake it completely and it gets all the chemicals out and then it's totally safe. So that's that's the trick is make sure that. You're Ed, I love that you're doing this. And I mean, there is no end to your creativity. Ah, well, uh, I don't know. I, the, my, I'll show you the very first thing I ever had to make with Sculpty because I'm up here and I just noticed that there were a couple of these. Cool. I had to make 500 of these for a Girl Scout dinner oh my goodness. one year. That's so, a lot. Uh, <laughs> they, 
they wanted polar bears because that's back when the Coca-Cola polar bears were cool. <laughs> so <laughs> I just saw that it was a Christmas ornament. And I, I made each one of these for the girls, and they had them all on their pl like dinner plates, the dinner thing. I just saw that and had to show you guys. That was great. Awesome. So now you're you're experienced. That puts you in the professional realm. <laughs> well, I don't know if I got paid. <laughs> Sometimes but, the the best slash only payment you get is the experience, knowledge, and wisdom that comes from something. The the next year though. They asked me to do it again, and they were talking birds, and I made 500 different types of birds. And I was hoping that there was some birds in that thing, but there wasn't. All there was was the polar bears. Ed, I, I can see you making 500 fish and selling every one. Absolutely. <laughs> People are dying for Ed's craft work. Well, I, I make them so, so they're kind of like a cartoony, you know. They look great. I made a tapeworm. The tapeworm might be in there. I don't know. I love it. I made that for myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. I don't know if it's there or not. It has to be. <laughs> well, this is, it's my mom's china cabinet, and she always hated it. <laughs> I got you. That's a fantastic story. I made but, a tapeworm. Uh, it's in my mom's china cabinet. <laughs> so, guys, just because the Sculpey is pretty expensive, I've decided to make the lid out of a cat treat container. And then on Rico's stream today, I drilled little holes and put toothpicks in it. So basically, I'm going to build it around the plastic so I don't have to make a whole layer of heavy uh, clay. And I tested it, and it doesn't melt under 250 degrees which it takes for the clay so it, it's going to work really well well that is awesome uh xander do do x do with five dollar super chat says my weekly tribute to the tennessee fish mafia thanks for your protection absolutely uh -huh. you keep those dues paid we keep you safe yeah i appreciate you xander do but that's the only way it's going to happen <laughs> rack do you know what my last name means no, maybe you told me, but I don't. I don't recall. Little bird. Oh, That's well, they got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's more for the women in the family. But yeah. So, so what kind of name? What kind of name is that? Czechoslovakian. Czech. Or, you know, I've bird watched Czech. in Czechoslovakia. Oh wow! I Did saw a cousin? long tail. Uh, a long tail, I want to say long tail pipit. I don't know if that's correct. Hmm. Long tail tit. It was a long tail tit. There's a a lot of birds with the the tit name, like the tit mouse. Yes, we have the, the tufted tit mouse and the black crested tit mouse in Texas and West. Why do they name it that? That's a good question. Um, this is a late night show. We should probably still be family friendly. Oh, I didn't know if it, I just always thought, I wondered if it meant like small or something in another language. It does. In, in, oh. in European block countries all use that. I mean, we have a chickadee, they have a coal tit. Okay. So we've got uh, Whips World says, I wonder if Chattanooga Ed would make my Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Blah. Wow, I can't talk tonight. You know, I have actually made one before, uh, but I made it out of car seats. <laughs> For the, I cut up defective uh, uh, Colorado truck car seats and made one. And it, I've made a lot of stuff out of uh, car seats, some car seat foam over the years. It's it's actually pretty easy to do as long as you have like a, a, an electric knife. That was my key thing I used. So yeah. James H is uh, playing on that uh, interesting border of um, curiosities here. 
Yeah, uh, boobies are a type of birds that, that are a pelagic species. They live at sea. And my favorite bird watching t shirt is a picture of a blue footed booby. Yep. And it says, um, My eyes are up here. I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I am familiar with the blue footed booby and the red footed booby. So there, there is your difference. Uh, you guys so, can ask us any bird question, and one of us. Yeah, that guy. Have a good shot at answering. Bird garden, definitely. <laughs> Mrs. Fever's upset. I didn't ask you about making her a fleur de lis. I've made cool. one of those. I've a. Uh, I made that for my sister's army. Uh, that's a Warhammer thing. And I've made one of those for that, for a, a tank. IHSP's Tank Tribe gave us the uh, origin of the Titmouse name in chat. Wow. That's pretty cool. I, that is. So, he's uh, from Kansas City where they have lots of Cardinals, Blue Jays, Robins, a lot of the traditional stuff I grew up with. Oh, Michael A., thank you for that. Says, uh, remind Ed to score the clay in between the layers. Tit garden. Yeah, I know. I didn't bring my tools up. I guess I could poke it. Stephen okay. P. 2003. Uh, Awkwardix had a suggestion that would be, uh, I, I concur. I concur. Yeah, that, that would have gotten you quite a few subs right there. Yeah. I don't know how many of them would have stuck around, but you know. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I've told my wife, if you just substitute my ugly mug for a booth, babe, uh, clickety click, click. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, where was it? There we go. Killer Kitty 08 says, Chattanooga, Ed, did you make the body one at a time or do you have to build so far, bake and repeat? Um, what I did was uh, I, I made what's called a coil pot. Uh, when you're doing ceramics, there's like different ways to do pottery. And one way is to put it on a wheel and spin it. Another way is to roll out long pieces of uh, clay and then you just coil it. And you can make it all different shapes and sizes. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a big Native American Indians did it, I think, somewhere. And they would do it. So you can actually see the coils basically oh. on the inside. Yeah. And I scored all the coils and... Uh, just layered it. And then on this side, I kind of tried to make it look like, you know, how uh, minerals kind of have that bumpy look in the caves. So that's, I was just going for that. Lumpy it's an excellent it. technique reveal, Ed. <laughs> Thanks. So Lumpy Dog says, first night of bowling, first NFL game, and Ed on YouTube, it's a good night. Oh, how did the, the football game go? Maybe I don't want to know. It's it's Cowboys versus Tampa Bay, so I really don't care. But I, I'm rooting for the Cowboys on this one. There you go. Uh, Whipsworth had a question for you, Bird Garden. I don't know if you saw that or not. I'd be happy to read it to you if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead. So Whipsworth says, Bird Garden, I hear a bird around here that quote-unquote whines, like when Adam Sandler makes fun of Schneider's character when he says, Maze and grown ups. What is that thing? No, uh, research. Illinois. Start with gray catbird. See if that's your bird. Famous whiner. Mm. I've never heard of the gray catbird. It's very, uh, it's, it's one of the mimics. So you have in the mimic family here in my yard, we have gray catbird, northern mockingbird, which everyone knows about, and the uh, brown thrasher. Now, how do birds have the ability to mimic other birds? I don't know, but these birds that do are awesome. Like that um, brown thrasher has a playlist of like 12,000, I mean, 1,200 mimics. And northern mockingbirds can do uh, mechanical sounds and other bird sounds. I had a cockatiel growing up, and it could mimic every outdoor bird. It sounded like the bird feeder was in my bedroom. That's awesome. That's really cool. 
a lot of people picking up on that famous whiner. We have those here knowing as well. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I've never seen a gray uh, cat bird, but I do have a gray bird cat. It's a big old gray cat. He loves to catch birds, I hate to tell you. It's the closest I've gotten to that one. You know, I'm avoiding that subject. I know, I know. I had, I had to poke at it a little bit. I stayed away from it for an hour. It's fine for you. I'm not offended. I'm just not waiting in. <laughs> right, absolutely. Well, uh, Patty's hey, Tank says uh, cat birds are elusive, but you'll hear them. Come here. Rex, I don't think uh, my cats have ever caught a bird. Oh, you're so good. You're so good. But you they've are. caught a lot of bugs. And you mice. Are. Lookout is making an appearance ad on your live stream. Hey, oh, I'll, I'll have to send her the treats in the mail. Oh, that would be so nice. She would, <laughs> she doesn't get enough treats. You know what I mean, Ed? I could tell. She gets no attention and not enough treats. <laughs> right. I'm sure we're all buying that. <laughs> <laughs> so can so you guys I, see what I'm doing here good enough? Yeah, yeah, I'm that's just, a good view. I'm just slowly working it. So I'm going to start all these stalactites. Those are the stalactites, right? Yep. So they'll be kind of like that. But, well, I don't have a side done yet. But Now, are you going to be able to bake that lid also? Yeah, I already tested it. I tested it last week. And uh, the lids can handle the 275 degrees for 45 minutes, which would be the max time I think I would need. Okay. And it they didn't even get soft. I don't know what plastic it's made out of. But. So I have an ask, and I normally don't have an ask. I try to, to give, and I appreciate all that's given to you me. You do, James. I'm going to vouch for you on that. Uh, I thank you for that, Rack. My ask is this. Uh, I know we've got some people in here that were not hanging out in the Fish Room Fever stream, and I don't hold that against you whatsoever. It's a different type of show. But... You may not be familiar with the Bird Garden YouTube channel, which is what we were highlighting and talking about on my stream. So for those of you that maybe missed that stream and are not familiar with Bird Garden, I will say he is nine subscribers away from 900. Holy so cow. I think we might have well, nine people. You that are guys are here. amazing. So and my ask would be go check out his channel. I think you'll enjoy it. Again, lots of relaxation and knowledge. Um, see if we can't give him that 900 number tonight. Thank you guys very much. I pre I see Big Tank Hank here. He's one of my moderators. Big Tank Hank's awesome. Yep. This whole crew is awesome. I can't believe this. Oh, we've got an amazing community. I love these people. I try not to ask for much, but that's going to be my ask. Well, I just noticed I hadn't hit the like button on Ed's stream. Shame on me, but it feels good now that I have. Absolutely. Well, I had to double check, make sure I had. Yeah, we got 44 thumbs up on the screen I'm looking at there. So thank you. A huge I thank you to everybody that. for that. I don't want to uh, go over and lose connection somehow. So I will do that on the replay. You know, I think Big Tank Hank asked me to be on his live stream months ago. Now he that I'm awake, I'm going to have to hop over there. Is that invitation still available, Big Tank Hank? Hank's an awesome guy. I got to hang out on his uh, stream a while back. That was a fun, fun time. You know, we need to do a collaboration. I need Ed to make me a clay birdhouse or bird feeder oh. that I can feature and mention uh, Chattanooga Ed YouTube channel. I would love that. That would be super cool. I love collaborations. I do. And Absolutely. I like you know, I actually stole the uh, the picture that I used on the thumbnail for tonight's stream on my channel. I actually uh, went back and I pulled that off of the thumbnail the last time we had you on, which was uh, collaboration, conversation, and conservation. I love that. Um, and I, I think, uh, I'm thankful that you did that. I was much younger then and prettier, so <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Liquid Zoo, uh, I really do appreciate you. Liquid Zoo only Finn says, uh, well, I do. Uh, I'm assuming that's the hold it against you. You don't come waltzing into Chattanooga, Ed, and not having first been to Fish Room Fever. It's all right. You know, different strokes for different folks. But God love you, Liquid Zoo, for your support. Thank you so much. Heck, yeah. I really appreciate him. Lots of awesome people in here. Just kind of scrolling through the chat. And there sure are. 
one of my problems is I'm pretty fast at making things. Well, I'd say after making a thousand plus miniature sculptures, it just kind of comes second nature. Well, I mean, when I paint and everything, it goes quick. Okay, I don't like how this is awfully square. I think I'm going to change that up. Uh, it looks okay, Ed. Ed, it looks okay. Okay, I'm going to... It breaks it up when you, when you see it on in the frame here. Okay, cool. You know you're going to end up doing this at the next fish convention. <laughs> you know, it's a good I, demonstration. Guess what? Guess who is in charge of uh, Aquashella uh, Aquashella Skate? Thanks, Bunny Viper. Who was in? Who did what, Ed? I'm I'm in charge of the Aquashella Skate Off. Oh, okay, cool. I made. They already have a guy that makes the first place trophy. Yeah, he's a real good woodworker, and he makes sure. a, a wood plaque. Sure, but there was nothing to give to second and third place, so I made these two things. This is the third place nice. metal, and it's gonna be a. I've got like tie dye ribbon to put through it. I love is that. that. Is that kind of a bronze color? Yep, for his third place. <laughs> Perfect. And then second place, silver. Yep. And uh, I don't want to write. I'm going to do like calligraphy on it, saying Dallas Aquashella. But I don't want to put 2021 and have the thing get canceled. Is that so, like eight? Is that like an octopus reaching around that? Yeah. Oh man. That was. You're so creative, Ed. I love that. It is. That's and wonderful. I got like this. The ribbon is going to be this tie dye ribbon. Oh, well, I've never seen that. That'll so, work. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to hook it all up and get it done. But it was so nice that they, they asked me if I'd like to help out with it. Oh, hey, like, you guys this. know a Bunny Viper in chat? Um, Absolutely. Bunny Viper mentioned she subbed to the Bird Garden. Thank you so much. Nice to oh. meet you. I appreciate the support. And again, Bunny I think Viper. it really ties in. Not only do we have a lot of people that you know have other interests besides fish. Obviously, we're doing a crafting show, um, although it is fish related. Uh, but it, it goes back to that that stress relief that a lot of us you know go to fish keeping for. Uh, you know, relieve some anxiety just have something to help us relax. And I feel like that really ties into the bird garden channel and what you do over there. I think so. Thank you, James, for mentioning that. I see Kaler's aquatics oh, in the chat now. Hey, Bob. Good to see you, Bob. I met Bob in Knoxville at Kenny's place. And he said, I'm giving away hugs. I said, lay one on me, brother. There you go. <laughs> well, that was nice of him. It was nice. I don't know if I've ever got a hug from Bob. Well, you were there that day. You missed out, Ed. Yeah. Well, I can't Bob believe and I it. are buddies, so he sees me a lot more, so I'm probably kind of boring. <laughs> you're the man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you're boring, Ed. We need to do another Tennessee get together. Um You know, Rack, I was gonna do one at the uh big Deep South Guppy show, but uh, they canceled it for outsiders. Yeah, they said that I couldn't bring everybody, and then he said I couldn't come. And then they said, Oh, wait, you're a member, so you can come, but your friends can't. And I'm like, oh, Jerks, yeah, no fun. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get back to normal one day, it'll be great. We will, we will. Um, I, I can't really release any details at the moment, but there has been a major development regarding uh, Aquaticon. Um, that I can hopefully share with you all soon. Uh, let's just say it is huge, pun intended, um, and I look forward to being able to share that publicly. Well, I'm going to hold you to that, James. Absolutely. I, I hope you do. Um, this It's something that I was really shooting for um, in terms of taking this event to a whole new level. Uh, so I was really excited um, when my buddy Kenny at Aquatic Marine, which he's he's 
come out of the closet as the man behind this thing. Um, you know, he was the the guy in the background for a while, but uh, when he kind of came around to being in agreement on this idea, um, it's, it's really going to take things to a whole new level. And I just mentioned that because I'd like to do something, um, you know, Tennessee Fish Mafia, however you want to label it. Um, just do a, a meetup with all of you all um, at some point. Maybe that's not necessarily around that. And other people would be welcome, of course, too. But I'd love to do another get-together type of thing, hopefully soon. I what went to Kenny's do? store and met him. And let me say, first of all, that store is immaculate. Fish are healthy and beautiful. He supports Project Piaba. Had a wonderful time. But the energy, it was electric yes. in that place, just yeah. having the meetup, getting to put uh, press the flesh, putting faces and names together with hugs and handshakes. Fantastic event. I can't wait to do it better and, and hopefully more often if we can work it out. Most definitely. And one thing I don't think I've ever even mentioned uh, in terms of what he's got going on there, he actually has a uh, legitimate marine biologist on staff. And I thought that was very cool. You know, there's not a whole lot of fish stores that actually have yeah. that. So that is cool. I love that thing, Ed. That is so neat. You think it's coming along? I think it is. I think it's looking good. You're never even going to know there's this filter back there. Yeah, let's we'll see what it looks like behind there. Did those? Did the uh, stalactites get any crystals? Uh, there. I'm going to put the crystals above it, like uh, where because the stalactites are kind of the new rock. So I'm going to do the old rock gets the crystals. But. Well, bam, there's the cis filter. Perfect. And I, I am going to have it on a stand. So it's going to be about two inches above what it is because I don't want to bury it in the substrate. You know, like I said, I'm trying to figure out the best way to keep as much or as little clay involved as possible. So are the bubbles going to exit through where that plastic lid is now? Uh. Yeah, I'm going to cut a big chunk of this out. I'm, okay. just, I'm just going to use the plastic lid for cooking it. Basically. Right. So, someone asked a question in chat, James. Did you see that? I am trying to get my chat back, actually. I, I mistakenly closed it. I had a whole bunch of windows open. I've got your channel up. I've got Ed's up. I've got StreamYard, a bunch of other stuff. Um, I've got my chat. I don't know but, how you do it. We lean on you for technology and... Well, I appreciate that. Let me get back to where I lost out at. Um, what are those, Ed? This is Beta Rocks from the 70s. Uh, it was at one of my local fish stores, Fish Mania. And he purchased the fish store from the old old owner. And he had stuff that had never, ever, ever sold. And this was one of them. was all these Beta glass rocks. And they're actually made in Australia, which is really weird because... I don't have a lot of Australian fish stuff, but uh, I I bought them basically for uh, when I make miniatures. I like to make terrain and stuff for them, mm -hmm. and so I like to get like things like this to put with the snow to make it look more ice-like or something. But I thought it would look great on this. So you think I should put the crystals in the slag tights? I'm gonna say yes. I think so. So uh, I see a question from RB Animals Rescue. Bird Garden, was that what you were, uh, were leaning yes. towards? Okay. So RB Animals Rescue says, Bird Garden, if you could bring back a bring a bird back from extinct, what bird would it be? That's a great question. Great that question. is fantastic. Um, there were three. Three jumped to mind. I'll, I'll mention each of them. The Carolina parakeet, which was a parrot we had here in the Appalachian Mountains. Wow. Yeah, a green, yellow-headed parrot hunted to extinction as an agricultural pest, and the, the feathers were also used in women's hats. Um, and now we don't have a parrot uh, in the Appalachian Mountains anymore. That's and the, um, the um, ivory-billed woodpecker, very, very famous in Tennessee, ivory-billed woodpecker. That's that's worth a look up if you haven't heard of that one. Absolutely. And uh, Rico Stan just mentioned that one in chat. Actually, said I oh, really woodpecker or carrier pigeon. 
And I, then the next one is the the is, was it the carrier pigeon? Uh, that that was the two things Rico Stan said was I rebuild woodpecker or carrier pigeon. Yeah, the, what, whatever the pigeon was that we had billions of, uh, and we hunted those uh, as a nuisance. We're going to wipe them out, and they got down um, to uh, below critical mass. No one could believe it, and then they just they just vanished. It's a shame. So it's a shame. So I do have to say a huge thank you for all the people in here showing the support and love. And congratulations, Bird Garden, for hitting that 900 subscribers. Oh, my gosh. That you're much closer. No way. Maria Z throwing a $5 super chat out there. It says 900 plus for rack with the, the party confetti popper thing. I wish I had some darn party poppers that I can't ever get a hold of anymore. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 900 subscribers. We started out at 850. You that's guys awesome. are amazing. I'm blessed. Thank you. Absolutely. And that, that's exactly it. It's, it's not me. It's not Ed. It's it's these awesome people in the chat here. So a huge thank you to you all for the support and, you know, bending the needle toward the good, as my buddy Rack would say. <laughs> you definitely did tonight. Uh, BJ Palmer says, good one. Uh, Rack equals Carolina Parakeet. I thought the IB Woodpecker had been relocated. Definitely the carrier pigeon. The ivory billed woodpecker definitely was relocated, but then there was no substantiative evidence. So, oh. so now I'm a hopeful skeptic. We still don't have a photograph. We can't say, yeah, we saw it right here, but um, good possibility. I have a personal friend who went on an expedition and that it came back negative. Oh, so, so, so maybe it's still out there. We've had reports in Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, uh, Florida, but no, nobody can get that photograph. But the, the last book that was written on the ivory billed woodpecker, the last known photographs were taken by James Tanner, a Tennessean. Maybe I just need to get out there and start looking around. If you find it, you'll be glad you did. That's all I'm saying. So I do have a question for you, Rack, and I didn't ask this earlier because it, it could potentially um, go off the rails, so to speak, down the rabbit hole. <laughs> um, but I know you uh, are a huge supporter and a fan of Project Piava, the work that yes. they do. Yes. Uh, and you and I have talked many times, not just about what they do for fish, but also how that affects the local ecosystem as well, yep. uh, including birds. So you know, actually, James, it Project Piaba started as a, an idea to protect birds. Yep. The the birds and the monkeys, the the uh, megafauna down uh, around the Amazon River, the Rio Negro. And then they further study revealed, you know what? If you protect the fish, the birds and the monkeys are going to be protected because it's the slash and burn and the runoff that negatively impact fish. And the slash and burn is the destruction of the habitat for the monkeys and the birds. So just being mindful, thinking sustainably, and I don't, I don't mean self-deprecating. I mean, what, what would allow us to enjoy the Amazon River and its natural beauty and everything else we need to be comfortable and mostly convenient? Uh, and what comes to mind as a bird watcher, I don't hear this talked a lot about uh, in the fish community, but birders talk about it often. I'm a coffee drinker. Every morning I'm drinking the coffee. And so shade grown coffee is a thing, which means you don't have to level typically warmer climates, Colombia and, and areas of South America to grow coffee, right. uh, even Africa, um, Hawaii, where beautiful coffee is grown. You can do a shade-grown coffee, preserve the habitat, and drink your coffee. It's like an opportunity to have your cake and eat it, too. That is. That's fantastic. Yeah. And so once you look into things a little bit, it's like you don't really have to. Do, it's not It's not an or. And this is what I try to incorporate in my personal paradigm as often as possible is and. and how, does, how is it mutually beneficial? How can exactly. you and I both benefit? How can you and I both have a great time? And unfortunately, I think so many people look at the or and are 
feel like things are mutually exclusive and they don't need to be. Um, so absolutely. That's great. Great. Polarization sales. Unfortunately, I don't like <laughs> it. It does. It does. I probably should have made some sort of a thumbnail slamming you, you know, trash talk. Then we've gotten. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we would have gotten more views and subscribers for everybody, but I just I'm not into it. It's like I at, at some point I don't care about the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's about if I have the numbers, I want it to be because yeah, I'm loving people, they're loving me, and we're helping each other. 100% agree with you there, my friend. I know you do. You absolutely exercise that. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do. Uh, Bunny Viper says, uh, Chattanooga, Ed, you would love building the habitats for taxidermy. And if you ordered yourself a couple of taxidermy supply catalogs, I bet you will find all kinds of cool stuff to play with. I have actually bought taxidermy kits. Nice. Bizarre. But that was in my younger days. And I prefer not to... And, you know, I used to be a big fisherman and stuff, but I actually prefer not to kill the fish anymore. I don't know. I just... I like catching them, but I like cut the barbs off the hooks so I don't hurt the fish. Right. And stuff. And as long as you keep pressure on your hook, you'll pull the fish in. You know, you don't play with them and you'll be able to still bring it in. But Most yeah, definitely. Taxidermy, I love all the neat eyes and stuff that come with it. So, Lonnie, aka Looney Tunes, I know you mentioned you had been lurking. I uh, very much appreciate that. Uh, said, Hey, Rack, your knowledge with the birds and the cards on Fish Room Fever was awesome. <laughs> I got four out of five, Ed. That, that's awesome. That is. That really, really is. At 3G, I, I, I love the wording here. 3G says, Just watched a rack of rack shorts. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I hope your life is better. Because I promised it would be. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Our good friend Bob Kaler, Kaler's Aquatics and Exotics, throwing a $10 super chat at you, Ed. Says, Ed, thanks for all you do, my dear friend. And then a hug in parentheses. Oh, he gave me a hug. Oh, there's your hug, Ed. And, and 10 bucks. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, Rack, I, I want to be honest with you. I'm. I'm not a big fan of monkeys. Yeah? Yep. I don't I know a lot about them. I think they're kind of cool to watch on TV. Yeah, but in person, they're kind of jerks. I've, I've heard they throw, throw their poop. poop at me. Yeah, yeah, I had one throw poop at me. And yeah. ever since, I've been like, no. No monkeys for me, please. Absolutely. No. Uh, so Bunny Viper says, no, Ed, I mean the stones uh, and rocks and glittery stuff for your sculptures. You should see the snow glitter. Oh. Great that information. Thank cool. you for that. Uh, reading okay. ahead, Stephen P. 2003 Aquatics says, Rex, is there any bird that just freaks you the hell out? And the answer is no. There are lots of birds that just amaze me into stunned silence. But uh, no, they don't really freak me out. Well, I I'm going to play off of your answer to your favorite bird being the one that's in front of you. I think the one that would probably freak you out would be the one that you never get to see. Yeah, it drives me nuts <laughs> the one I chase all over the place and can't see. That's called a nemesis when you're a birder. There you go. So I did a, I did a video on the Bird Garden channel called um, Evening Grosbeak Nemesis, and it was the culmination of my 20-plus year. Okay, that's two decades looking for this bird and not finding it. Who's the evil bird? The Evening Grosbeak. Oh, that's actually – I thought you were just calling it that because you wanted to be mean. Well, I finally found it. Oh, no. Yeah. So then I had to have a new nemesis. Oh, uh, Liquid Zoo is calling you out, Ed. Liquid Zoo only fin says, Ed, what is this today? All this negative. I don't like this movie, that movie, Blue Jays, Monkeys, Kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too much fun, Ed. <laughs> well, let's ask Greg. Rack, what do you think about Goonies? Uh, about what? <laughs> the movie Goonies. <laughs> I don't think I watched it. Good man. <laughs> but watch out. Don't ever tell people on the internet that because they'll get mad at you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so we've got a couple people that are asking in terms of freaking you out. What about cassowaries? Pretty cool bird. Uh, Steve Irwin had an encounter with a cassowary and Ended up with one testicle. Whoa. Goodness gracious. 
I don't think I want to meet that bird. It's related to the ostrich. Does it kind of look like an email or? Yep. When, and they have a big a hard wedge on their head, like a helmet. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I know what that is. Yeah, I think I'd rather not encounter that. I don't think I want to get close enough for one to detesticle me. No, definitely not. Well, did he just get hit in the groin? Or he, did he you know how Steve hit? Irwin is. He jumps on alligators and crocodiles, so he was chasing one around that kicked him. Yeah. I got hit by a hockey punk puck once, and I was a little worried. We'll just leave it at that. And, I love this and, show. I was wearing my protection too. I I just kind of like squatted down to try to get the puck to hit me in the chest. Instead, it hit the ice and came straight up. So it hit right between my skates and straight up. Oh man. I was a baseball catcher for, for years. That was my game and that was my position, and I can relate. I would say I feel you, but I don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah. Good man. <laughs> Wow. Goodness okay, goodness. I'm done, guys. All right. Y'all have a great night. We'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a I, – I didn't think I would get done so quick. Wow, 22 minutes. I thought that would – I was hoping I'd get it done in an hour. So that's pretty cool. And you really do have a knack for these things. <laughs> yep. Tomorrow <laughs> – or I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or uh, Saturday, but I plan on going to Knoxville, and I'm going to meet Tian Aqua. Have you met Bobby, or I mean Robert yet? Brack? I've not. I saw the name in chat, but I've not met Tian Aqua, I don't think. What? He's getting into modeling, and... Uh, I'm just going to take him to a uh, hobby town and sh show him some good tools. Cause it's all about the tools. Oh, I thought you meant underwear modeling. Oh, well, he probably can do that on his own. I can't really give him tips there. But you could probably give him some tips, James. Uh, that, that's only on the fish room fever after dark show. Oh, Figured you'd get your $1 bills ready for him. Fish room but, fever after hours. <laughs> Bob Kaler asked if uh, my interest extend to reptiles. The answer is yes, Bob. I had a, uh, I had a reptile business years ago. Love those. I was the chairman of international amphibian day. So I don't, I don't like chemistry, but anything at the organismal level, other than plants, I'm very weak in botany. I, I tend to really dig into I know Bob keeps reptiles too. Oh yeah, yeah he's, he does. He's got some awesome stuff going on on his channel. So Stephen P two thousand and three Aquatic says, "I get uh, house wrens in my attic sometimes. Where did house wrens live before houses? Where did barn owls live before barns? Caves, caves and cliffs. How about hollow trees?" trees. You can still find a, a barn owl in a, those spots, too. See our buddy Brian, Detroit Shrimps and Aquatics, hanging out. What's going on? Good to see you. I'm going to bring my camera up. Oh, see, Ed finished and now he's leaving. Sorry, guys. Yep. I'm just going to make it so that the camera is back up. It's so bizarre because what I'm using today to keep my camera up is wingspan and two of my aquarium boxes. That's a great box. This is related. Did you know Greg Jones was just in Knoxville this week? Yeah, I've been communicating with him. He went to Gatlinburg. Oh, wow. He went to Ripley's Aquarium in Gatlinburg. That's awesome. I saw he was with Sean Peck and had a picture of him with a Superman shirt on. Oh, that's awesome. He was trying to get some uh, newts or salamanders from a friend of mine that I knew from International Amphibian Day um, in Pennsylvania. So I'm sure that'll work out, and I hope he's able to do a video about it. Yeah, I would love to see some stuff from him again because he's a great guy. I thought 3G had a question or something. 
I'm horrible at keeping up with chat. Ed's so captivating with his crafts. <laughs> have you ever seen my tower I made? Where the I fish just saw it in the background there. The obelisk. Yep, yeah, it's going to be going in one of my uh, fish tanks. It's going to go in my Pepsi Cola tank. Is it going to have a light in it? Yeah. Well, that's cool. And uh, like it changes colors and stuff. I like it. But like I, I actually carve people's names in it. So like, uh, oh, there's my, I think ED right there maybe. I don't know. Oh, no, maybe that's the co-op. I don't know. I have to look at it closer. Yeah, that's the co-op right there. But uh, there, my ED for Ed is right there. Ooh. I've got KG on here somewhere. I should have put a rack in. That'd be an easy one to spell with a lot of cool letters. Oh, I'd be honored. Thank you very much. There's Fish Room Fever. That FRF. All right, all right. Now, that, that, a little Fish Room Fever. Yeah, uh, that's cool. But, uh, you know, we got Rico Stan, who's uh volunteer to go ahead and get the Fish Room Fever logo neck tattoo. He, he might one-up you. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do that. I, I made I, I made the joke with Mrs. Fever. I said I'm going to feel bad when I change the logo the day after he does that. Oh no! <laughs> oh my your worms! I've been playing with your logo all night tonight, and I, now I don't know where it is. Um, Bob oh. Kaler says he got a new snake. Man, those Pebblon milk snake. That's a beautiful snake, Bob. I'm envious. That's a beautiful snake. Get to see Crystal's Pets and Plants. Awesome getting to meet you at Aqua Show as well. Who did you meet, James? Crystal's Pets and Plants. Oh, hey, Crystal. How are you? A lot of people don't know. That was actually the very first giveaway that I ever won off of FishTube was from Crystal's Pets and Plants. So it was nice to finally meet her after a couple of years. She's very nice, isn't she? She's she is. always very supportive. She hung out with us afterwards. Cool. Yeah. She had pizza with us ah, i'm gonna try to make a tapeworm quick <laughs> all righty ed what'd you do last night i made a tapeworm <laughs> yeah. i made a tapeworm live on youtube just taking a peek we got 904 subscribers on the bird garden channel huge thank oh, you wow, all for that. Thanks. james ed thank you very much that's because you guys are working for me and i appreciate it uh, you know, as somebody mentioned uh, in the chat earlier, you were uh, one of those people that definitely helped a lot of the newer channels um, in the yeah. fish community uh, with your River Life and then Pond Life channel. So yes, it's, it's only fitting that we show you that same love well, and thank support you. That you showed us. Hey, uh, thanks. It's not owed at all. That was something that I saw up and coming as the River Life channel that didn't exist. And I was like, we got to do something for small channels that are just fantastic but not recognized absolutely yeah well, so whoever said that thank you, you very much i love you too <laughs> you let me do uh one of your spotlight shows yeah yeah i remember That's the time slot takeover time slot takeover and ed was the first tennessee fish mob member that i met and it was at um it Aqua wasn't Aquashella. It wasn't Aquashella. It was the other one. New York. Uh, what was the name of that convention? Aquatic Experience. Aquatic Experience. Yeah. You said, Rack, I watch your videos. And I'm like, what? <laughs> A real human actually has seen one of my videos? <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I knew you were from Tennessee, though. Not until we talked, you didn't. Yeah. That was a really good trip. Yeah, I enjoyed I, I that. When that I'm at the Red Quitstock there, that's when I caught pond fever. Yep. Here we go. Solani says a tapeworm, make a coolie loach instead, Ed. <laughs> oh, What's the difference? I don't know. I don't know. I wish See. I had some black. My color stuff is all downstairs. Uh, so RV Animals Rescue says, a uh, question for Rack. What do you think about the California condor? I think I've chased it out there at the Grand Canyon several trips and still haven't seen it. <laughs> I think it's doomed for extinction. I want to see it before it's gone. There are some birds free in the wild, but my understanding is they have to collect them every so often. 
and, and do medical treatments to reduce the content of lead in their systems. Wow. Yeah. So listen, what we know about extinction is when it's gone, I've got a video uh, on the, uh, the pond life channel about extinction. And this is the conclusion. Let's just stop extincting things. Whatever that means. I'm on even, the even the tapeworm. Let's don't extinct it. Well, no, I, I'm for getting rid of tapeworms. I'll just make every dead tapeworm. I'll make a tapeworm for somebody to have. Well, that's a that's a beautiful, cute tapeworm, Ed. <laughs> no, I'm thinking he killed that one already too. I wish I had some black uh, clay up here because I'd make him look a lot more cute. But yeah. You can't really see his face because of the whiteness. I can see it. It's cute. <laughs> so we've got uh, a couple questions. Well, a question and a super chat here. This question's for Rack. Uh, this may be a no comment question. I don't know, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. We're going to put, put you it out in, there. Uh, put you in the hot seat to steal uh, somebody else's saying here. Um, this was from. It just jumped on me. Uh, there we go. Liquid Zoo Only Fin says. So besides his koi, does Rack still have fish? Yes. Yes, I have um, I have a one-gallon shrimp tank. I have a five-gallon shrimp bucket. I have a five-gallon guppy bucket. I have a 20-gallon community tank, and I have a 75-gallon goldfish tank. Very, very nice. Have you and been to any goldfish shows lately? No, not since you know what started. I was at a goldfish and koi show, flew into Orlando, Florida, no problem on Sunday. By Wednesday, Disney had closed. Yep, I, I remember Disney, that. Like, what, what, what? That was the same weekend James and I went to the big fish deal. Yep, we were kind of sad we weren't going to see it, the big fish deal. You were yep. going to that koi show, and then all that happened. And now I've been at home making 15-second videos about birds. There so you hundreds. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So we had a $5 super chat from new local Austin uh, says, I just can't quit you, Ed. I was wrong to judge you and apologize. <laughs> Kaler's aquatic just commented aquariums. Yep. My heart went pitter patter. Yes, Bob. Yes. Aquariums. By the way, I've, I started a new aquarium um, using a, a, a lift that, you know, like the matten filter uses an air lift. Yep. I've, got a bulkhead for an aquar a five gallon bucket to make a, a lift filtration system using one of the uh, aquarium co-op sponge filters. That's awesome. Yeah. The aquarium is never going away. It's never going away. Even if I needed a hospital tank or a transport tank for a koi, it's five gallon bucket. That's awesome. That I is. decided to make us all the same size since I'm all, I'm surprised I got, I, sometimes I'm a little too quick. Yeah. Well, and there goes the chat head. with comments. Hold please. <laughs> well, that was awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking to forward to seeing that in the tank finished product. Somebody did ask earlier and I, I kind of missed it. Uh, what paint are you going to use on that, Ed? Oh, I have a concrete paint. Concrete paint. Uh, you also can use it on uh, tiles, tile paint for your bathrooms. Totally safe for your fish tank. Um, Good to know. I think, I think the official name. I'd have to run downstairs. Oh, man. I'm sorry, guys. But you can't use any spray paints. Like uh, Fusion, you can use on different things in your tank. But Fusion will make this stuff melt. And it never dries. It will just constantly melt. Yep. So no spray paints whatsoever on this stuff. That's good to know because a lot of us do use that spray paint for a lot of things in the aquarium. What about the fusion paint? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, all the spray paints can't be used on. Okay. Uh, okay. Stuff. Good to know. Yep. Hey, uh, the Zen Ginger had a comment about extincting um, some pests. Some in some uh, please, and I, yeah, flying tree roaches. I think was the other thing. I would well, probably me, be okay with that, but I'll try. Well, let me tell you this: I, you know, Rob Lupton over at uh, Flip Aquatics hates yep. spiders, 
So I asked him if on his missionary travels, if he'd ever encountered one of the flying spiders. And he said, oh, oh, no. Well, I'm, I was just kidding. I hope I don't speak those into existence because I wouldn't like them either. <laughs> no, but I had a conversation with an Orkin man who told me that every insect has a place uh, in, in, in ecology yeah. other than, you know, being things we don't want to be around, except the bed bug. The bed bug yeah. does nothing in ecology that's beneficial. It only harasses humans. Wow. So we what? could get rid of that one. <laughs> yeah, we could okay. extinct that one. Bed bugs wouldn't be bad, but I would fleas are the one that I don't like because of what it does to your poor pets. You know, I know that there's little bugs that eat the fleas. Yes. But and maybe those bugs in turn feed something else. And you know, it's just all part of a system. And a lot of the parasites, you know, are huge parts of the system because they're the only thing that can eat the big thing for all the little things to eat it. But uh, like I'll keep chiggers. Uh, I'll keep mosquitoes. I'll keep roaches. I just, the fleas really bug me because of what they do to the pets. Well, yeah. So I'm talking really big about let's don't extinct anything, but mm -hmm. given an option, a lot of the things on that list, I might, I might, not My try. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pull the trigger, but I wouldn't stop someone else from pulling the trigger. He said, I wouldn't run toward the button, but if I casually leaned over on the desk and hit the button, whoops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so uh, Pom <laughs> Pompey Ranch says, Bird Garden, I'm one of your new subscribers. Thank you for thank that. Thank you. Pompey. Thank you. Uh, I used to breed macaws and then became allergic, but I love all the outside birds. Yes, fantastic. Then we've got a question from Whips World here. Um, Whips World says, hey, Fisher and Fever, have you ever built your own plywood aquarium? And if so, how big? I want to build a four by eight by four, but I'm not sure something that big is possible. It is definitely possible. Absolutely. Um, you I've can built a do that. One. Yeah, he built a cardboard one. I have not done one on my own. So I had plans at one point in a house I was in. It had the concrete slab basement and could have supported that structurally. Um, as I've mentioned many times before, I own a mobile home now. Um, so that's not something I can necessarily get away with doing, but uh, you can definitely do that. Uh, there are some great DIY videos out there by a lot of different people on concrete, not on concrete, excuse me, on um, plywood builds like that. Uh, so I would just look around. There's definitely some reliable sources. The, the big thing to look into is supporting the walls of that structure, making sure you get those two by fours or whatever would you build with uh, support beams along the sides, keep that plywood from bowing out. And then of course the sealing process with the, the palm sealant. James and I actually talked about doing that in my basement. Yep. Uh, we were talking about like doing a 2000 gallon tank, you know, like I, I want a big, you know, tall square. Um, and he has some great ideas, but the only problem is I like guppies and it's like, I really don't need big tanks. And I was like, <laughs> How many 20 gallon tanks will I lose by getting a 2000 gallon tank? Yeah. Well, I mean, I got to build a wall in this spot anyway, but uh, I don't know. Maybe in a couple of years. I don't know. Well, when I get to a thousand subscribers and bequeath all of my fish room stuff to you and James, hopefully there'll be some female guppies in there for you also. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. I would love that. I'm, I've kind of got a lot of collection of different YouTuber guppies. So I've always wanted to get some rat guppies. Most definitely. Uh, 503 Aquatics with the $3 super sticker with the fist bump pair. Oh, Very much appreciated. She is so awesome. She is. Thank you, Shanna. Is she, have you ever met her, Rack? Um, I don't think so. Remind me if I'm wrong about that. She's a little newer to the game. Um, I had her on my spotlight a couple, like a month ago, because I do a show with Rico on Saturdays yeah. where we try to find a newer person that's just awesome. And that is great. She's amazing. She's got a great personality and she could kick all of our butts probably in another couple of years. She'll be Who there. is it now? Absolutely. 503 Aquatics. 503 Aquatics. I'm going to go make sure I'm subscribed. She does a Saturday morning cartoon show but it's it's yeah. called saturday morning cartoons but it's not about cartoons it's just yeah. cartoon time I, I think it's pretty awesome 
Saturday right. morning is not something I'm familiar with. Yeah, R Rack's yeah. not allowed to look at anything electronic on Saturdays, I don't believe. <laughs> oh, well, I think it has more to do with the morning than the, the day of the week. There you go. Uh, Maybe, yeah, morning. Uh, we'll, we'll have, I think we're going to have to do a Tennessee Mafia bird watching party and picnic. Gosh, that would be so fun. That don't tease me. What, when's a good time to do that, Rack? Um, when all the lockdowns have finished and... <laughs> I, we could get KFC and eat chicken. Listen, I, man, you, you get me started on these. Oh, wow. You show up here. We go to an urban location. We make a long list of really cool birds, and then we go have your choice of really cool food. I, I like some tacos and um, craft soda pops. And um, your, your choice of um, art uh, venue or just interesting people I know around town, we'll make a whole day of it. It will be great. Oh, absolutely. Well, just, uh, just give me a good date for you. Not in October. <laughs> October is – oh, we were – James, I kept not asking you, but we were invited to speak at another fish club in October, but I told okay. him we'd have to wait till next year. Okay, I gotcha. found and subscribed to 503 Aquatics. I can't wait to binge watch uh, awesome. some of your content. And the, the date, Ed, that you're asking about is the date that the Bird Garden Channel reaches 1,000 subs. Oh, okay. Yeah, 1K, one, one okay. you and James come up. We do a collaboration video including bird watching, koi pond, bird feeding station, tacos, sodi pops. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Are we uh, – we're – Four, 13 minutes over. Ooh. I am so sorry. We've got uh, Rico Stan goes for an hour, and I am so sorry, Rico. He's another part of our uh, Fish Room Fever family. Yeah, and, Rico, uh, I hope they left some questions unasked for, for your I, live stream. Well, he's got a great topic, and uh, he's going to talk about ways to get fish information other than videos. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be cool. I, but I do have to ask Rack one more question. Sure. Uh, how do you feel about bringing extinct animals back to life? I'm all for it. Oh, awesome. Okay. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm not a fan of hybrids, mm -hmm. uh, but if 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 they're, I'm well, not I'm not going to say too much other than I'd rather see things alive than dead. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I you can get in the weeds more. there, but that's my that's the end game. Yeah. Well, that's cool because uh, I I know they've talked about doing that with the condor, and I don't know if they did or not, or maybe they were just cloning condors to try to add to their numbers or something. But uh, yeah, because we still have living ones, we don't have to hybridize uh, versus say a woolly mammoth. Yeah, that which we might have found DNA, but we don't have another woolly mammoth, so it might take an elephant to carry it or whatever. Well, I mean, who knows? Rico Stan brought you back from extinct. Maybe he can bring a couple other things. No, that back. was that was hibernation, not extinction. Okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, not that there's a lot of difference <laughs> now that you mentioned it, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, one requires you being dead. Yeah, yeah but yeah. inactive either way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, Rack, thank you so much for hanging out for an hour with no, me. No, Ed, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. you. You got some awesome people in here. I love seeing everybody. Definitely. Uh, new, new, new friends, old friends, and again, your mods have been so kind to me. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. In particular, the Zen Ginger has been super nice uh, posting links to my channel. I appreciate that. Awesome, and. Thank you, all you guys that gave super chats. I really appreciate it. Helps me buy more clay. <laughs> uh, and if anybody knows, like if you guys are ever out on the internet and you see this oven baked clay affordable, let me know. Because right now, the cheapest I can get it is eight pounds for, I think, $60. So I've been searching and scouring it, but. Oven baked clay has really skyrocketed lately. Like one pound costs sixteen dollars, and it used to be Ooh. like half that. Yeah, it was so, cheap before. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, 
it just stinks. You know, for me to make another one of these obelisks, you know, that's at least forty dollars worth of clay. So kind of a, a drag. And yeah, I really got, love it. You got our buddy here, Bird Garden, threw a five dollar super chat at you. It says oh. clay fund. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Rack. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, and James, thank you so much for being an awesome guy. It's always a lot of fun. Look forward to it every week, hanging out with you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, my friend. And and guys, thank you everybody for showing up because you guys make the show. Otherwise, it'd just be us talking and having a fun time, but not as much fun. So let's all head on over to Rico's. Uh, I'll be there. Uh, we'll let, we'll invite these two guys. I don't know. They probably have to go to bed, but we'll invite them and we'll see y'all in about three minutes. Absolutely. Last second oh there, Stephen P. 2003 Aquatics with $24 Super Chat. Holy says, cow. Clay after Thanks. YouTube takes its cut. Well, thank you so much. That's super nice of you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, guys.